Hi friends, today we are going to discuss the budget 2022-23. Government of India presented its own budget to the Parliament of India and it was presented by Honorable Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman has presented budget to the Lok Sabha on 1st February. Now we will discuss the different aspects of the budget. See different aspects include the guided philosophy of the budget and how this budget is going to pave the way for the uh, path of growth and what are the novel ideas or the out of box proposals that are mentioned in this budget and also the fiscal position of the country. So under this broad four heads, I am going to discuss the budget 2022-23. <clears throat> so first we will discuss the philosophy behind the budget. See what is this philosophy for a budget or a guided philosophy to this budget. Does really budget have any philosophy? See what is the meaning of a budget? Budget is nothing but annual financial statement. So that means in the coming financial year that starts from April 1, 2023, uh, 2022 and ends with the March 31st, 2023. So, in this financial year, how the government is going to spend its revenues on various expenditure and what are the priorities for the government that you will get it in the budget. But the point is, it is not a mere financial document. It is not mere a financial document. It is a policy document. It is a policy document policy document in the sense on which areas this government want to focus, on which items this government want to emphasize, what are the sectors that this government want to promote, how this government is going to achieve a growth, how this government is going to take, about, take care about its own people. So these are all the things that are present in the budget. So budget is not mere numbers and figures but budget is all about the policy of the government of the day. It is a policy of the government of the day and when I am speaking about a policy of the government definitely every government have its own has its own philosophy because without any philosophy without some sort of ideology without some sort of ideological background they do not implement anything. So now the philosophy behind a political party or a party is in power will certainly affect the proposals of the budget. So what exactly this government wanted to do in this country and what is the ideology or what is the philosophy of this government in order to improve the facilities, in order to improve the livelihood conditions, in order to alleviate the people from the poverty. So these are all the things that they have and what is the ideology that they are going to have, we will discuss now. See the guided philosophy to this government is, there are main pillars under a broad heading called New India. This government always speaks about New India. So what does it, New India means? That means you want to build an another India? or you want to improve this country to the higher level and if yes, how you are going to do? So the new India is the guiding philosophy to the government of the day and under this new India, we are going to have different items. First one is sustainable growth. Growth is compulsory for any country to develop because the parameters which gives you the developing status of any country is growth. If your country is growing at a higher rate, then your D GDP will be doubled and your per capita income increases, then you will move from developing status to the developed status. So the growth is the foremost important factor in order to grow or in order to develop any country. But that growth should be sustainable, that growth should be sustainable. That means if you grow at a particular rate, that rate must be continued. It should not be a volatile in nature. There should not be a frequent 
up and downs in the growth rate. Suppose if you are growing at 10 percent, we must grow at 10 percent in the upcoming years. And if one year it is 10 percent, another year it is 4 percent and another year it is 7 percent and again next year it is 6 percent, you cannot call it as a sustainable growth. Sustainable growth is a very necessary condition for achieving new India. Second one, modern infrastructure. How can we achieve this sustainable growth? How can we achieve this sustainable growth? Sustainable growth can be achieved only through the sustained production and sustained production is possible when we have a sustained livelihood condition and sustained livelihood conditions can be possible if you have a modern a world class infrastructure. And if you do not have modern infrastructure, it is very difficult for us to increase our production levels. Infrastructure is foremost important area that is another guiding principle that guides this government. Next inclusive growth, inclusive growth, growth by few people cannot sustain over a period of time. A sustainable growth includes inclusive growth that means every person must involve in the growth process and whatever the growth that country is achieving it must include every person. That means, this growth must provide opportunities for all. This growth cannot be done only by few individuals. And when in the path of growth, everyone must involve in that and once we reach that growth, the result of growth must be useful for all. That inclusive growth is also another guiding principle to this government. Next, self-reliant or Atma Nirbhar Bharat. This is one of the most again important guiding principle, Atma Nirbhar Bharat. That means we wanted to be self-reliant, we wanted to produce and we wanted to uh, fulfill our own requirements through our domestic production. Wherever we are having the capacities, we want to produce and where we do not have, it is a different story, definitely we need to depending on foreign countries. But the foremost principle is, when we have the capacities, you should not simply import the items. You must utilize your own capacities, both physical infrastructure and as well as the social infrastructure that is having in this country and also try to export it to the foreign countries. That is how you have to make your country self-reliant or Atmanirbhar. This is another guiding principle. Minimum government and maximum governance and private participation. This government strongly believes in government should not present everywhere and wherever the government present, the government machinery should be smart enough that means there should be a minimum government but it must deliver maximum governance. Wherever automation requires go for that. Wherever digitization requires, go for that. Wherever the simplification of process requires, go for that. Wherever relaxation of rules and regulations required, go for that. And government do not intervene in every aspect of the uh, lives of the people. And where private people cannot do that, their government must involve. And nowadays, government is privatizing many of the sectors to the private people. In the last year budget, the government has unveiled its own privatization policy. They are still sticking to that. So, this government strongly believes in, government need not present everywhere and even if it is present, there must be a minimal presence, but that minimal presence and as well as the private participation must lead to the maximum governance, maximum benefits in this country and it must, it must lead to the maximum growth in the economy. That is an another guiding principle. Trust. This government strongly believes in trust based economy. That means, this government is believing this government is having a faith in the wealth creators and government is not here to suspect every of its citizen. No, this government do not want to suspect. This, if someone commits some mistake, but this government is considering that that mistake might be committed because of some error, but not 
a wanted error. Government is not considering that. And government in so many sectors has uh, went for the self-declaration. That means, I am believing you. You give your own self-declaration. And accordingly, I will give you the whatever the uh, permissions and other required uh, requ other required permissions. This government believes in that trust. This government is encouraging the wealth creators. This government do not want to suspect everyone and on that name, it do not want to delay the projects. On that name, it do not want to delay the growth. If you want to start a business, yes, give a self-declaration and try to start a business. But if something, something goes wrong, that is a different story. But the trust is again a paramount principle or a guiding philosophy to this government. Next, special focus on border areas and northeast. This is a government and one of the ideology of this government is nationalism. And this, this government is also giving lot of importance to the security of the country. Now, in this budget, especially in this budget, the government, the budget has not mentioned about any geographical area except the border areas and northeast. There is only a mention of two geographical areas in the entire budget because generally budget used to mention about some of the projects to the some of the areas in this country. But this year budget has not given any specific allocation to any specific geographical area but except to this border areas and northeast. So, this government want to give more importance to this border area protection and also this government want to address the divisive forces through a way of development, not only through the way of law and order issue. They are considering it as a law and order issue to some extent, but it cannot be resolved only through law and order. They must bring the development to that areas so that, so that we can protect our country and border areas must be developed and border areas must have a proper infrastructural facilities so that we can protect our border. So, these seven are the guiding philosophy or the guiding principles of this government because why you need to understand these principles because when you looking into the budget, when you looking into the budget. The budget is nothing but it is an adjustment of revenue. You are going to have some amount of revenue and how you are going to adjust it to the different areas. Even any finance minister can make a budget. Any finance minister will make a budget. But the point is whether your budget is affecting the lives of the people or not is again depending on their philosophy. Some people, some political parties in this country having a different philosophy and through that philosophy they want to develop. I will give an example. Now, some political parties ask the question, why this government do not want to increase the allocation to the MG Narega program? But this government strongly believes in a different philosophy that we wanted to increase improve the livelihood of the people through the capital expenditure, but not through the MG Narega. Both the programs aimed at improving the livelihood of the people, but the philosophy is different. And if you want to understand the provisions of the budget, you must understand the philosophy. If you do not understand the philosophy, you will be confused. You will be confused and you always think that this program, this project or this particular scheme has not given en enough amount of has not provided with any of, um, enough amount of finances. So, this government is not towards the development. This government is not towards the welfare of the people. But their way of welfare is something different. That is the reason why you need to understand a guiding philosophy. This guiding philosophy includes inclusive growth. Inclusive growth. And this guiding principle includes the Atma Nirbharata. So, that is why this guiding principle is very, very important for us. Next, in specific, in specific, this budget has talking about this Amrit Kal. This budget is talking about 
Amrit Kal. Amrit Kal means now we are in the 75th year of independence and the gap between 75th and 100 that is 2022 to 2047 this is the Amrit Kal. And in this Amrit Kal, in this Amrit Kal, we have set some targets and in order to achieve these targets we are presenting our budget and we are spending in such a way that to achieve the targets that were fixed under the Amrit Kal. Technology enabled development. A development simply a development in a way of a 20th century, 20, 21st century and 20th century uh, model. The development should be a technology based. The development should be technology based. So, the technology must drive the development. It is not simply the development which we have done for last 75 years. Whatever the upcoming technologies, whether it is related to energy related technology, data related technology or artificial intelligence or any of the mechanized technology. So, like any technology, a technology enabled development. So, we wanted to grow, we wanted to develop. The development and growth must be associated with the technology. Now, you can find out in the budget whether they have given importance to this technology aspects or not. Second one, energy transition and climate change. Yes, now there must be a development, but the development must be in a sustainable manner. In a sustainable manner. Because of whatever the ruthless, ruthless growth that the entire world is following is creating lot of problems to this mother earth. And your development, your development must be sustainable. It must combat the climate change. In such a manner, we have to develop. And whatever the energy systems that we are using, that must be changed to the renewable. Renewable. So that we can reduce the pollution, so that we can reduce the pressure on this mother earth, so that we can develop sustainably. Sustainably. Eco-friendly. So, that is an another uh, target next virtuous cycle starting from private in starting from private investments so uh, this government strongly believes in there must be a growth there must be a development and growth and development cannot be done only with the public investments because the resources that are available to the government are very limited are very limited. Suppose if you looking into the PM Gati Shakti or National Infrastructure Pipeline, it needs 110 lakh crore. Does really government of India having such a 110 lakh crores of rupees in her hand to invest on this infrastructure? No. So, government as a prime mover, it can initiate the investment process. But certainly, it cannot be a sole player in the entire investment process. So, definitely there must be a private investments and private investment might be from domestic invest, might be from domestic or from the foreign. So, we are ready to, we are ready to invite both domestic and as well as foreign investors. And private players will bring some sort of efficiency and bring some sort of new technology into the production process. And wherever private do not want to enter, their government can intervene and government must provide the other services. So, but the private investments are again an another important area that this government has put as one of the target in the Amrit Kal. So, the Amritkal target is a technology enabled growth, energy transition and combating the climate change and a virtuous cycle starting from a private investments. Next, there are four priorities that were set in this present budget. These four are PM Gati Shakti, PM Gati Shakti. PM Gati Shakti means it is and another name to the National Infrastructure Pipeline. We want to create a world class infrastructure in this country. There are seven different areas I am going to explain in the next video or in the upcoming uh, the part of the budget. 
So under this PM Gati Shakti, we want to create a world class infrastructure. That world class infrastructure will create employment in this economy and that infrastructure will act as a prime mover for the further development and growth in the economy. So that is what PM Gati Shakti this government is focusing. Second one, inclusive development. Just now I have discussed about this inclusiveness. Yes, everyone must be involved in the process of development, that inclusive development. Productivity enhancement and sunrise opportunities. So productivity must be enhanced. It is not only the production, but productivity also must be enhanced. And we must focus on the sunrise opportunities. That means we cannot put our own efforts on the existing sector because existing sector has some limitation because some of the other countries in the world have already have an edge over that sector. So it is very difficult for India to harness uh, to the maximum extent. That is the reason why we must focus on this sunrise opportunities or the new sectors that are entering into this society and we must harness the uh, the, the benefit from these sunrise opportunities. Next, financing of investments. So, we are ready to create the investments, but the problem is financing. So, this, this budget is also going to uh, address the financing part of investments. Financing part of investments. So, if you understand the overall guiding philosophy of this government, this government strongly believes in a new India where it has a modern infrastructure, a techno savvy development and also a concept of inclusive development with a minimum government with a minimum government participation and also it includes the participation of private people from both domestic and foreign. And this government believes in an investment led growth model, investment led growth model. That means by investing more, we can really increase our growth of the economy. That is what the guiding principle of the budget 2022 and 23. With these guiding principles, we can understand the budget fully. If you do not understand this philosophy and you are always in a confusion to understand why actually government has announced some money to this particular sector, why government has not announced money to the other sector. So, this is something about the guiding philosophy of the present government and with this philosophy the government has introduced the budget for the financial year 2022-23. Amrita, IAS Academy.